Guys, are you loving Chaya and Reb Schneier? We're back, guys, for round two with Chaya Kogan and Describe, a.k.a. Reb Schneier. We didn't even, like, get to the surface yet. You, you, you guys are going to love them. Hold on, let me see if they're trying to tell me something. Reb Schneier. Reb Schneier, I like Okay. Let me see if they're here. That was quick. Very good job. That was, that was very quick. Usually I have to wait for them to come back on like seven hours later. I'm like, guys, where are you? The <laughs> island is waiting. Wow. Okay, so we ended off with the fact that we're old. <laughs> we're all oldie moldies. I already and... forgot. <laughs> no, I forgot about you. Hey, what? Just jo whoever just joined, we are on with Re Reb Describe. Reb, 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 Reb Schneier Describe. Reb. I like that name. I'm going to call you Reb Schneier. Reb Schneier, you know why mm -hmm. I say Reb? First of all, because you're holy. And number two, because when I asked the Shiloh if I could interview men, he said, try to call them Mr. or Rebby. I'm like, I can't call you Mr. Schneier. It's like, I'm what? Be, I'll be the Rebby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be Rebby. I'll take that. Um, it sounds, I like, like that. That's, that's a epic. stage name. That's epic. Like Rebby. Just Rebby, straight up. Yeah, I think you should change your name. Reb Schneider. Reb. Reb. It's like a mic drop name, you know? Rebby. Rebby. <laughs> I love it. Drop he your Rebby. He keeps throwing things every time he does a mic You're drop. You're breaking like, Naya's <laughs> house. We have, we have someone from the production line there catching everything past <laughs> <laughs> whoever wants to come on the Zoom, they're asking. The Zoom, I posted it on my latest post, so go check it out over there. And, okay, we need to know, guys. We, we were saying we're old, so time is ticking, and we need, we need, we need music from both of you. So talk to yeah, us. Yeah. Are you yeah. going to have a song together? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to sing here because, like, you have, you have like, tons of men here, right? No, I'm saying, no, are you going to come out with... Oh, are we going to put a song out there? Um, that's something we're still... The uh... idea arose, and it's a very highly pro progressive type of move to do such a thing, you know what I'm saying? It's a little... Why? No, I'll yeah, tell you so, why. Yeah. Because, like, we, from the beginning, we'd, like, we'd love to put out a song together. Yeah. I mean, it could be crazy. We want to throw that out. But the problem is... That just like when you wrote Schneer uh, describing Chaya, brother and sister, and people are like, what? That's the problem. Because people are going to think that I'm going to sing with guys, and who's going to sing with women? That's oh. The, that's the problem. So, so you are song to be called song, siblings. Unless throughout the whole song in the background, you hear they're brother and sister. They're brother and sister. They're brother right. And sister. That's, so that's the only way. Maybe we should call the song brother and sister, you know? Just to make it out, you know, like... Like, okay. And then they're like, then like, oh, but maybe he's not a real brother. And maybe he's not a real sister. Maybe they just said He's a really son, good actor. You know? He's a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's problematic. And I, 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 on YouTube and just don't stuff with guys. How could, oh, she be his, how could she be his sister if her name is Kogan? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that is, that is the problem. Like, we're we're going to call your song Siblings. And it will be like that's it, siblings. Siblings. Yeah. And you're good okay. to go. It's, it's just like riding Kalisha. We're just gonna have to. I should call this. Okay. That's should I get this? Uh... I'm gonna. I'm gonna get this one second. This is part of the uh, shown by arrangement. You have to get out of here, people. Kaya. I'm getting right. off camera for a second. Speaking to wifey. Sema love to Sima. So Sima. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Now, now okay, it's so ready. Lady talk. Uh, okay, woman to woman. Group called Kolot. We would um, sing and dance all over Israel. Um, I did it for about, okay, I was originally, um, I went on Shnichuk to Alaska for a year. And then I came back to Israel. This is like after I finished high school. I did a year of seminary. Wait, pause, 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 pause. Alaska. Alaska. Oh, nobody even like went there. How many of you actually went to Alaska? We just see it in the, like, 
You did shlichas and welcome back, Reb Schneier. <laughs> hey. That was very quick. Was she like, where are you? You're like, I'm with Shimmy Adar and Shimmy Shmuz. She was trying to get in, and she didn't, she didn't know how to get him to see the Zoom. Aww. But but she, she didn't realize that we were still going. <laughs> oh, okay, so she, okay, good. That was, but I'm she's happy cool. that she's coming on. Okay, so Alaska. Yeah, so I actually looked for a place that, if not the Shlichas, I would never go there. So... Yeah, I went, um, I wasn't married yet. I went after I finished the year of seminary. I went to Alaska for a year, which is incredible. What's the and Jewish then, population there? So there are 6,000 Jews in Alaska. Wow. Believe it or not. Yeah. And the Shluchim there are amazing, the Green Books. They do incredible work over there. They have a beautiful community. That is and, so beautiful that you guys did that. Actually, one of the questions that someone said, what would be for both of you your ultimate obviously Israel but if you had to choose anywhere in the world a shlichas destination the ultimate place to be where would you guys choose I mean you mm. were to, you were in Alaska and Moscow Mexico. our younger sister is on shlichas in Mexico in Cozumel yeah, yeah, yeah. she's she's the shlucha of Cozumel yeah Hani, so if anyone is visiting Hani Mexico Kaplan. on a cruise I'm sure half and they of these land people, in Cosmel, yeah, sure everyone has been there. People have been there. Yeah, she's super Hani. famous. Yes. She's amazing. Connie yeah. Kaplan. She's Kaplan. incredible. People like live by her for months. They're like, yeah, shout oh, out. Oh. Shout out Duri and Hani Kaplan. Yeah, they're amazing. That hold down the whole island of Cozumel. They're, they're and incredible. They're little, literally like a beacon of light in the middle of the ocean. Like, island, I, I speak you know, to her on straight. a Sunday. I speak to her on a Sunday. I'm like, hey, fine, Shabbos, Shabbos. Like, oh, yeah, only 400 people. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, oh, I was in the prison all Shabbos because there was a girl who got, you know, she got into trouble. She went to prison. So I was just with her trying to get her out the whole Shabbos. Like, oh, okay. okay. Oh, we, we just had a Shabbos meal. Yeah, we just great. got back from the beach. <laughs> Our lives like, are boring. Oh, yeah. We are like, insignificant. Yeah, or like another time, she's like, oh, how is it possible this woman, you know, like, she had to give birth and she didn't understand, you know, uh, Spanish, so I was just with her the whole time, the whole shot. So I haven't slept for about 24 hours, I'm just going to sleep now. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, you did that. How many siblings are you? How many siblings are you? It seems like each one is, like, incredible sunshine in this world. Yeah, powerhouses everywhere. Five boys, three girls. Five boys, three girls. Wow. Your mother and... I I have to hear the secrets one day of how she raised you guys because she did a pretty darn good job. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope she writes all her secrets in her upcoming book, Bezrat Hashem. Maybe. You're going to have to see the book. Yeah. So, <laughs> your, so your wife was uh, your, your sister. Oh, you see, that's why you can't sing with Schneier. I just messed up. Your... your <laughs> Your, you si your sister was telling me about how you met your wife. Okay. Hey. You want to go, go see the same again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find out exactly what I'm allowed to say. I'm going to tell you how she, now, what I Do told you. Tell, or should I'm, I tell? I'm going to tell, tell them what I told her. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the secret, you know. He doesn't know that. She yet. had to convince her to so go out with him. He doesn't know yet. Why she went out with him? No, just kidding. <laughs> you don't know. No, but really, seriously. Like, we'll pay yeah. you. <laughs> she was uh, paid how, like, how long was the shit? Three hours? Okay, one minute. Oh, you you see, <laughs> I live in New York, guys. I live in New York. Go New York! Okay. So basically, uh, Sima and I were on this group. She was actually kind of like the music producer. She was in charge of choosing the songs, all the music sitting in the studio and doing all the hard work. Um, so we were a group of, I don't even remember how many girls we were. They were like real rock stars, like a group. Like they used to shut down like auditorium stadiums and like huge halls, like sometimes three times a yeah. day all over the country, like performing like 360 times a year. Like epic type of so like, we, yeah. we performed pretty much basically for all the religious, like everywhere, like all the cities. Yeah. Um, a couple times, you know, in different cities. And, yeah, so we were this dance group. We used to sing and dance. And in between, there was, like, comedy parts that these comedians would do, these two amazing women. I don't know if you heard of um, Michal Levitin. Whatever. She's funny. I did an event in Israel, and she is yeah. hysterical. 
Yeah. Wow. So we did the program with her and you did, uh, you did Ariel. This is amazing. So we do our song and dance and in between that come on and do their comedy. So we basically went all over Israel and so Sima was the music producer. And then I'm like, Sima, I have a brother. And he's just become religious again. And he's pretty talented and pretty cool. And he's yeah. a born again Jew. <laughs> and I think, you know, you guys could be pretty good together. Basically, when people went out, got married. What? Bob Chuba? I ain't going out with no Bob Chuba. <laughs> well, well, how many years later to have uh, a bunch of little cute kids yeah. and happily married? We're very happily married, Baruch Hashem. And um, we're total opposites. She's like a straight shooter. I'm like, you know, a problem child, you know. <laughs> <laughs> She's my anchor, you know. I I realized that if I didn't marry an anchor, I'd like fly away. <laughs> and I'm totally right. Until this day, I'm totally sure that if I didn't marry a girl like her, I wouldn't ever be able to like hold myself back. You know, I'm like out of control, you know. And she's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like oh, oh. <laughs> All the shimmy schmoozes, I, I, you know, for, to the married ones that I interview, I always, I, I don't like saying interview. I feel like this is a schmooze. It's not like, so tell me, when is your <laughs> lineage, right? But I always tell them that without your spouse, exactly, without your spouse, like, you wouldn't be able to be who you are. Like, they encourage you, they motivate you. Chaya, imagine you didn't have a spouse. You're like, you are over my dead body going on YouTube and singing. <laughs> With Kalisha, uh uh, right? And it's like you need somebody supporting you. And especially when we put ourselves in the spotlight, you, we need our cheerleaders rocking us on. Yes. So, so for me, it's like I have really, I'm really like, I have stage fright, like seriously. Like people really? wouldn't imagine it. I, I, I tremble and shake before I go on stage. And it's like, I'm like on stage already. I'm like, can you stop trembling? You're already on stage. Like you're being right. you're already singing. Just Put it, you know. Get your act together. I'm gonna have to kind of like get it. Okay, listen, you can't run away. Just do your thing. Uh, it happens every time. I, it's horrible. Uh, wow. But I think that actually that keeps me focused and doesn't let me get carried away because sometimes when you are in the spotlight and you do big things, then sometimes you can feel that you're like, you know, too incredible, you know, for anyone. So this kind of keeps me anchored and I'm like okay Hashem this is you just please let me make it to the end without fainting thank you so, <laughs> thank you God <laughs> yeah so you know when you always remember that it's not you it's all Hashem and just like Chaya I want to tell you and then you go on stage and it's like I don't know what I'm gonna say but whatever comes out just let's hope it's okay and people but, connect and people get inspired. And... The best songs, by the way, are written like that on autopilot. You know? yeah. Like, I feel like um, if I need to try and write a song, like myself, if I'm trying to write something from me, yeah. it's going to be a failure for sure. You know, the, the good songs, they, they you have nothing to do with it. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, huh? Huh? What? 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 Yeah. Where's this you coming from? Done. Yeah, it's like you have nothing to do with it. It's like really, it's like something is like passing through you and you're just like, like the dummy with the thing in your hand. You know what I mean? Writing it. It's like, if it comes from you, it's no good. You know what I'm saying? If it comes from wherever, you know what I'm saying? That's when the real beautiful stuff comes. You know what I mean? It's all God. Reb Schneer and Chai, I want to tell you a compliment that so many people were telling me when I posted about you guys is that you're both, you have talent, like if I were you, I would walk on like, Yo, I'm Chaya. I'm like, did you hear me? Because I'm the bomb. I'm really talented. And you guys, you remind me of like last week's Parsha about Aaron and Baaloscha. It says, and Aaron lit the menorah. He did that mitzvah. What does that mean? Like, obviously, he did. you're the Kohen God. The Hashem is going to tell you to light the menorah. You're going to light the menorah. Why are they making such a big deal? He did so. And it says, because he, oh, first, number one, he never changed his passion. Every time he lit the menorah, he did it with the same passion and excitement. And number two, every time he did it, and he was reminded, oh, dude, I'm the Kohen God doll, right? Like, <laughs> he never let it get to his head, ever. He was always that humble Aaron. 
And that's what people like see in you both. It's so beautiful that you you really have talent that you could brag about from here till tomorrow and you still stay humble and you're like, don't let it get to your head, folks. Don't let it get to your head. And and it's such um, an inspiring thing to watch that you still stay, you know, true to yourself the whole time and true to Akash Baruch because you're on a mission. Well, it's not really us. That's the thing. It is. It really is. It's, it's not like, us. We yeah. know that it has nothing to do with us. We know we're, we're very, um, we feel very grateful that we get to be a part of this cool thing. But, yeah, you know, totally. But we don't, it's not really, you know, anyone who makes music knows that it's not really anything to do with them. You know what I mean? You know, it's not really us at the end of the day. I we're love lucky, that. We're lucky people. You know? we're lucky. Yeah. And, and I feel really so honored that. You know, I think when you sing, just like I said before, sometimes you can give over a message that, you know, even through a sheer, sometimes, you know, it takes a lot longer to process. But with a song, it, like I said, it goes straight into the heart. My mother has an incredible story um, from one of the concerts she gave. She has a song that she wrote about um, the Holocaust. How there's a very famous story of how the kids, a lot of kids were sent to a convent um, Jewish children and they were hidden over there um, so that you know they wouldn't get killed in the Holocaust and then a rabbi came after the Holocaust to collect the children it's a very well-known story and for the kids looked like he couldn't you know he couldn't differentiate between the Jewish kids and the non-Jewish kids and he was you know racking his brains how can I get these you know, how can I you know recognize these Jewish kids and then he remembered that every night before the kids would go to sleep you know, the mothers would sing Shema Yisrael with them. And then, and obviously when he came to the convent, the priest wouldn't tell him who was Jewish and who wasn't because he didn't want him to take the kids back. So he stood there, the kids were in the middle of having their dinner and he started singing out Shema Yisrael and suddenly a whole bunch of kids ran to him and he, you know, recognized who were the kids. And so she has this gorgeous song and she play, she plays it on guitar and it's just like, you totally imagine that story happening. So she sang that somewhere in the US. And at the end of a concert, the concert, this woman comes to her and she's like, you know what? Um, my son does not go to a Jewish school. And if that would happen nowadays and the Holocaust would happen, he wouldn't even know Shemai's role. So because of your song, I've decided to move into a Jewish school. Whoa. Whoa, I just got the chills. Yeah. So imagine what a song <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Music is wonderful stuff. I also have a pretty incredible story that happened at one of my concerts. Wow. Hold on. I'm just, I'm just pre-warning you. I'm on low battery. <laughs> if yeah. it dies, it's Shimia Dar style. If, if it dies, I, I'm going to just come back on with a different phone. But I, I'm warning. Yeah. So I actually have a, a story also that um, happened at one of my concerts. I was pretty like, I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know how to, t it was like so overwhelming and, and like made me feel so small, like because of the story happened to me and I was so blessed, you know, to be there in the situation. So actually my song, which I have a music video. Um, That's what on. people are requesting. I it was a clapping. Okay. They're all asking for Hakol Mimcha. Okay. Yeah. So Hakol Mimcha was actually, um, it was written at a time we were living in Moscow. I mean, haven't gone to that part yet. Basically, two months after we got married, we moved to Moscow. Um, we were there for nine years, and we moved back to Israel three years ago. So basically, it happened at a time where we um, understood that we have to move back to Israel. Um, we were having medical problems with one of my children, and we had to just pick up and leave and leave everything behind, everything we built and we had a whole thriving young professionals community that we were running and we had to just leave everything. They built, they built, I believe, a whole Chabad house for you guys there. Yeah. Right? So wow. we had the whole building and everything and it was, it was, it was very hard, but, you know, we had to make this decision and, you know, family comes first. So, so the song Akom Mimcha basically came then at that time when I'm like, Hashem, you know, like, what do you want from me? Like, I know that you're giving me this for a reason. If you're giving me this test, that, you mean, that means that I have the strength inside. And I just have to find that strength because Hashem doesn't give anyone a test that they can't deal with. So 
I mean to have the strength and I'm just going to have to like, find it within me and just, you know, deal with it. You know, I can do this. So, um, and then at the concert, I, I, I said that, and I said, I know that if Hashem gave me this child, that means that, you know, he chose me out of all the mothers in the world to be this child's mother, because I can give this child whatever they need. And, and I feel really, you know, honored that Hashem chose me because he thinks that I have something special that no other mother in the world would give this child. And okay, and then I sang my song, I'll call me a After the concert, this woman comes to me. She's like, I need to tell you something. She said, I have an autistic child. He is 25 years old and my whole life, I thought that Hashem is punishing me for something that I did and that's why I gave me this child. But now that you said that, I understood that Hashem chose me out of all the mothers in the world to be this child's mother because I am, could be the best mother for him. And she was already 60 something years old. So I'm like, wow. even at the age, if I could change, you know, her whole thinking about this child of hers, you know, I, I feel like, you know, thank you Hashem for giving me, you know, this mission because, you know, I feel so humbled by this because it's just, I'm just giving over something. I, I, sometimes, I don't even know exactly what I'm going to say in the concert. I know like the concept, what I'm going to talk about, but I don't know exactly always what I'm going to say. Sometimes things just come out. Like, like, like Reb Schneier said, he said, uh, what is going, who is writing these lyrics? <laughs> right, right. That's what um, it is. So I felt so Come humbled and felt, you know, so honored to be part of this and part of her, you know, this change this is going to make in her life. So, you know. You took, it, you, you took a mother who looked at her situation as a challenge, as negative, why me, to like, oh yeah, let's do this. I'm your mama. I'm so yeah. lucky. You completely changed her mindset. And now can you imagine how much more love and, 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 and acceptance and you, it, I can't even, I'm, I'm jealous she's of your Lama Ba. She's not a regular human being. It's true, it's true. Guys, guys it's stop true. it, stop it. People are, lo people are loving the story. So hold on, so when are we, I, we need to know, when we need to look forward to something. When is a new CD coming out? Okay, what about you, you first? I made my CD. All right, That's fine. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so basically, uh, <laughs> basically, I just started working um, on my my uh, album. I want to make. How do I share? I want to make a nice amount of headway before I start releasing music because, you know, I want there to be. Uh, I want there to be. Uh, I don't want it to stop once it starts. I want it to keep going and never stop. That's the plan. Yoli's you know? here. Hey, Yoli. Hey, what up, Yoli? <laughs> <laughs> My mother was in Seagate. Hey, Yoli. I see you in the picture. Oh, on Zoom. On Zoom, I see him. Shout out, young Yoli. Hey, I guess Mooka's there also. Hey, Mooka. Hi, Tech. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. probably hacking the Zoom right now. <laughs> Reb Schneier, I, I want you to give me your word right now on the Shemesh Mus Bezrat Hashem when the CD hits. I want you to come back on and I want to I want you to, to explain every single song and the okay. meaning behind it. Okay. Okay. So, so this time I took the gloves off. Okay. I feel like I'm uh, much more, you could say, ripe than I was when. God knows what He's doing. Okay. He put me through. He put me through, you know, the ringer, and I came out, I feel like a lot better now. I feel like I'm more, uh, much better at what I do. I, my, I'm connected to my music more, um, and, 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 um, and less, less inhibited. I, I, you know, I, I'm basically trying to be more natural about uh, creating music this time, um, you know, and, and be true to myself and be honest about, you know, Issues that a lot of people may want to usually not show about themselves. I want to be real. And I think that art is about being true to, to yourself and your music and, um, and about saying the truth about sometimes things that may be harder to, to uh, admit to people or to yourself. And, and so many people will relate to your songs because everyone is going through those things and, and all different things. And, and if they hear an artist singing about it, they can relate and that will uplift them because they understand that they're not alone. 
even an right. artist doing crazy, amazing things like yeah, you. I came to understand. I it. came to understand that that's really why we were put here. You know, we're you know uh, we're we're put here to try and uh, um, help people get out of similar situations that we're going through that we may be able to find you know, uh, to be uh, a conduit to, to explain this this thing, you know, right. and to help people get out of it. And that's sort of what our, our job is. And um, and so, like, I am I feel like this time, you know, until now, when I mean music, I feel like I had uh, a lot of uh, rules and, and boundaries and, and, you know, I thought too much about it and, you know, trying to create exact message or whatever. This time I'm just trying to be real about like, you know, what I'm going through at the moment and uh, and what, you know, just trying to be real about my own life, you know what I mean? I just want to correct you for one second. I want to correct you. You're saying I want to be real now. You did a concert in the zone uh, over a decade ago, 15 years ago. And- Oh my God, I'm old. <laughs> I was trying to pass myself off as a 15 year old. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> That's that, 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 that camp. Right? And he went yeah. to study. I was speaking to Shane she, D, she, and she's like, oh my God, since then, they've been playing his music. That's the only music they listen to. Oh. So, yes, I was working mm -hmm. there, and I remember. Uh, hey. Daniel connection right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Danielle loves you. You you, you know that. Danielle's a, your she, biggest fan. I'm the BS, but, I'm a super fan. We, we love you both. And I, I want, when you were on that stage in the zone, you have to understand there are many girls that don't keep Shabbat. Some girls just found out that they're Jewish and everyone in between. And you were rocking it out semi-free, right? And then everybody's sweating and in it. And you, you took a seat and you were like, girls, do you realize how lucky you are that you're a Jewish girl? You know what it means to be a Jew? And I, I'll never forget it. And the girls are just like, oh. And you made everyone like believe that it's the coolest thing because it is to be a Jew. And it was like, and, and I, had to, <laughs> I, I didn't remember. I remember. See, that's what I'm saying. You're always true to yourself. No matter what stage you're, you're connecting to people, but you're always genuine, whatever message that you had. And you're always making an impact. You're always genuine, but now the only thing I is think music. now that, I think I think I think also musically more genuine. You know? Right, no. right. I want you guys to listen. Oh my gosh, it's coming how, out. How do I play them? Something I want to play them like a like an intro. <gasps> like be like a hold on, wait, know. hold on. Let me I see how much. It's like we're speaking all day. I don't know how this is going to turn. Zoom out. This is so well, it's Let me see how much battery I have. Hold on, hold. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ho hopefully, but every time it freezes on me, I, I look like a freak. I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> you look like, so it's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so what should we do? Should I play it? Like off my phone? Yeah. Okay. Are, are we going to hear vocals or just music? Yeah. There's vocals, but it's basically, it's, it's an editing concept. Okay. This is just a concept. Like the music is gonna change and everything. It's like a guide track. It's not even in time. I have to say this, you know, artists, by the way, before <laughs> artists ever plays you something that they didn't put out, they have to, they have to, they have to read you a disclaimer, you know? <laughs> so, like, I just want to say that anything I just said, I didn't actually say. Yeah. No, everyone else will be blown away. And he's like, okay, this is just a guide. So like, to everyone's like, oh, what is this? This is amazing. And it's like, yeah. okay, just, this it's all not, gonna be different. So it's never gonna come excited. out like this. Just, just, it's not gonna come out like this. It's not even. Some of it sound the same. Don't get even, excited. I'll be honest with you. It's not even legal to come out like this. I'm just I'm gonna throw that down. Right? <laughs> so don't be on YouTube. No, okay. We're now okay. judging. Here we go. I'm 
crazy. That's a guy. Can you imagine? Crazy. I can't hear clearly. We can't hear it clearly. Can I hear it? It's hard to hear. Anyways. Basically, what was I hearing? It said, turn it up. Turn it up now. Get lit, everybody. Where's my mosh pit? Make a scene in the lobby. Shut the block down. Make a hot like wasabi. Yeah. Wasabi. <laughs> I love that. Hot like wasabi. <laughs> Only you come up with that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, it sounds crazy. And that's his guide. I mean, come on. I so cannot crazy. wait. I cannot. Before, when the CD comes out, you're going to come and tell everybody the background of each lyrics that came onto your papers. Oh, yeah. The inspiration wow. behind each song. That's actually, that song was basically what we just talked about just now. Right. Yeah. Coming back. So the, the idea is like, um, um, I've done it again. I'm never let go of you. I'm never let go of you. It's like I'm never let go of you. It's like the music, you know, that was taken away from me. Like now, I'm never gonna let go ever again. You know, because I have like this. You have to know inside of us, artists, like all artists. I think I'm speaking for all artists. If you allow me to, please. Mm -hmm. Every one of them has like this unimaginable like <laughs> urge desire burning you know need to be creating music all the time or whatever art that the artist is creating they have this they have like this thing that if they don't do it they feel like like they're wasted. unfulfilled and like wasted. they're wasted and like depressed and then like it's a calling you know that artists have and no matter what they do that's like the strongest thing inside of them like it's, it's bursting through. So the thing is, like, you know, being pulled out away from that for so long, like, against my will was, like, so painful for me. It's it's sort of unimaginable. Like, the, the thing that I went, the worst thing was the fact that I couldn't make music. I couldn't express myself musically. And so, like, you know, now that, I, that I'm that i going to grab it again, you know, I'll now, never let go ever again. You know what I mean? Right. And because because you went... Get out, get out of my way. Get him out, get him out with. It's like, get out of my way, you know what I'm saying? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, that, it's, not, it's not that he did do music at all. One of the songs on my album, he oh, yeah. wrote. The one, It's All Good, it's actually on YouTube. And it's a pretty cool song. He wrote it and composed it. But it's so only good because he sang it. What's it it's called? called? It's All Good. It's called It's All Good. It's All Good, okay. Basically, it's about like, the worst day it starts off it's like she's late for a meeting and she's like burnt a hole in her shirt and can't find her other shoe and lost her keys and on the on the way it's like she hears boom and like her tire popped and it's like oh my god craziest day but it's like the course is it's all good it's all good it's all right i trust in you because you give me light i feel this heartbeat in my chest and, and I, I know, know it's so for the best because yeah <laughs> oh, you're always by my side. You're always by my side. You're always by my side. Always by my side. Yeah. You got and basically in the end, everything works out well, but it's like the craziest day. And it's so, he wrote that song. Guys, I'm getting you out there to do a, a song together. I think it's us or not to do a song together. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. I'm, 
I, I'm calling my Rav right after I finish this live. <laughs> call the management. <laughs> before my phone dies, before my phone dies, there are a few songs, a, a few questions that people wanted to know, like you guys growing up. So did you both want to be singers when you were little or what did you want to be? What was your ideal job? I knew I was going to be an artist. I knew it from since I've been uh, in playing drums since I'm three years old, like learning drums. And he performed, he performed with, what was the name? Basically, Avram Freed. Singers, I singers who would come to Australia. So he like, he performed with a, a few of them. Do you like, have videos? So, Do you have videos of yeah, that? Videos. <laughs> Is this little picture kid singing on stage? It's so cute. <laughs> you, you have to send me one clip. I don't I, up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Uh, that funny. Uh, yeah. yeah. I started early, like this guy's like doing this big show with an orchestra, and I'm like, I started like a verse early. I was like, shut it down, man. <laughs> like, let me let me show I you how it's done. You knew how to improvise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you want to be? Um, well, I grew up actually. I would perform sometimes with my mother on stage. And music was always within me. I mean, I was always in, you know, solos in school and singing. And, and then I had that urge to make modern music. So I did see myself doing it. I didn't, I didn't know if that would be my job. I mean, I didn't know if eventually I would do it, but I always wanted to. Um, is, ev is everyone in your family musical? Mainly. Not everybody, but, m but, m but most, like a lot of, a lot of my siblings, wh whether they went into music or not, they're very talented in yeah. all sorts of ways, not necessarily in music. For instance, I have a brother that's a dog whisperer. He literally can talk to animals, like we're having a conversation, and they listen to him. Like, Are he's you like, they made a television show about him in he's Australia. In Australia. He's yeah, like, he's an Australian bushman, like, living out in the middle of, yeah, I was like, yeah, Mike, he's a, he's a yeah, he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. Yeah, he yeah. literally has like skinning his sheep, you know, and like you know, and I, uh, uh. <laughs> that's so cool. Like he's yeah. the, be the best dog trainer in Australia. Yeah, he's like crazy. He's a whisperer, you know. I feel like he takes wild animals that they want to put them down, like like these crazy pit bulls that like eight other pit bulls and stuff like that, and they're like, that's it. We're we're done with this dude. That we and the RSPCA, the Australian Animal Rights, whatever. They, they want to put him to sleep. And then they here's the last he's the last stop and he basically is like the psychologist is like Listen, And if he if he says he can work with the animal, they step it's not no, it all, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, so like they're all very talented, all my siblings, thank God. They're all very talented. I have a brother who's like a super genius and um, he's like spending his life teaching Bacharim in uh, Yeshiva. He lives his life in Yeshiva, that's his life and the Where does he live? In Spot. Spot. He's oh, one of the Spot. biggest Lubavitch yeshivas in the world, and that's his job. His job is helping American kids get on their feet and learn how to learn and become human beings before they get married. And um, so he's he's amazing. You know, my sister, like we said, Mexican. ¿Dónde está la escoba de la bruja? I feel like every sibling is like one after the other, they're like, listen, I'm going to be so good. I'm going to sing to the world. They're going to, they're not going to know what to do with my voice. <laughs> and, no, and then, so we have a sister who's like in a powerhouse and yeah, like, she's like a, a, a social media guru and like has mad followers online. What's her name? Yeah. What's her name? Golda. She's more on Facebook. She's less on Instagram. My name is Golda Kishon and she's a home chef. She Ooh. goes to be personality. Yeah. And personality. Yeah, is very, she yeah. is she older than you guys? Because she's on Facebook. Okay. I'm I'm number two. Yeah. I'm number two. No. I'm number two. I'm number five. <laughs> and Golda's number one. Golda yeah, yeah, is no, no, no. number two. Yanni, Yanni and Spot is number one. Then Shia, oh. then Golda, then the dog whisperer, then me, then Sally in Florida. <laughs> And then you're like, who is amazing. Like, super know. hacker. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. And then Honey <laughs> in Mexico. I want to be in a room with every single one of you. Like, that's one of my dreams. <laughs> that's so loud. Oh you won't be able to hear anything. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know me? My name is Shimi Adar. I'm used yeah. to loud. You in our family. You I'm not going to tell you <laughs> a little something, something. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh, I got it.
Okay, I'm on like 3%. I'm on 3%. So hold on. There's so many. I feel so bad. People really had so many questions for you. I mean, look at this. But I'm going to ask you like the really random questions that make absolutely no sense and no okay. difference in anybody's life. But people want to know, okay, you. Cause that, <laughs> two more questions. What is your favorite food? Mm, I, I love all food. Oh, Ch Chaya, Chaya, I'm, I'm not taking that as an answer, Chaya. You come up with something. Junk food. Anything bought. I Anything like not homemade. Sushi, pizza. I'm afraid to tell you guys. <laughs> I'm afraid to tell you. I'm sort of like a cannibal. <laughs> Stop, I'm just kidding. It sounds weird. <laughs> I love, I love, people. I love, <laughs> people. I love, I love raw meat. I love raw meat. Like yeah, tartar. You're, you're like, you're like, you're like my brother food. talks to animals. I eat them. So you I like me. You like. I love, I love like uh, uncooked meat. You and my husband. Oh my God, what's up with that? It's it's amazing. I it's much better when it's uncooked. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not gonna get into it because everyone's gonna think I'm crazy. Yeah, I gotta tell you, man, there's something about being close to nature. You know, very close. I, I hear yeah. what you're saying. I don't know why this thought is coming into my brain and has, it doesn't have anything to do with what you just said. But you know the restaurant Mahal Teman in in Ma, something Teman. Ma, I love Teman. I love Teman. At the end of Bnei Brak, in the entrance of Bnei Brak. Yeah. yeah, and I go there and I'm like, uh, do you have jachnun? They're like, no, we have shawarma. I'm like, do you have melawach? No, we have <laughs> so shish kebab. I'm like, why do you call <laughs> yourself a man? It's a Moroccan. Lots of Yemenites come there. That's why. It's a, why. Food. Well, I don't the man. <laughs> it's a scam. Like, I'm telling you. It's a complete yeah. scam, and I'm very, I was very, very disappointed. That was our favorite place we'd go there after all the concerts of Kolo, where I met his wife. So we'd go there after all the concerts. It was like a pit stop. On the way, we'd all get shawarma on the way. After right. Second. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> okay. And and who, who was um, the more annoying one growing up? Which one of you guys? <laughs> Not annoying. annoying, annoying to maybe who? harder. Maybe troublemaker. Maybe who are Reb we talking about? Not Reb Schneier, Reb Schneier, you win, you win. Yeah, you know, you know, just today I remembered something. <laughs> I was trying to think back at like our, you know, when we first started, like when we started jamming together. So you're not like, I'm thinking back, like when did we start singing jamming together? So like when he finished the army, he was in the army. So he finished 20, the army. 20 Whoa. years ago, we oh, got yeah. it. Moldy, moldy. Um, so then uh, he, he was at home for like some time before he found what he's going to do. So he'd sit with his guitar and he wanted to jam with someone. And I just kind of self-taught myself and I knew only a few chords. So he made me play three chords, the same ones for about an hour and a half while he jammed <laughs> and like did all these cool stuff. And like I'd play the, the same three chords for about an hour and a she half. She was my loop. I was. Yeah. I was the loop. <laughs> I was the loop. Play the same strumming for like an hour and a half, the same three chords, and he can jam with me, you know? She still like has, she still has scars on her thumb. I was, yeah, I was teaching the rhythm, that's all. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay, la last, and then we're going to end off with this. You have 30 seconds to tell the world anything you want. Chaya, you have 30 seconds right now. I'm sure yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to freeze because I'm going to, what? Dream big, and you can make all your dreams come true. Just start. Start somewhere, and you can do it. I love that. Okay. Reb Schneier. Yeah, I want to say it's super important just uh, to uh, realize that we our minds are super complicated uh, apparatuses, but um, we need to take time out every single day to stop and figure out a game plan of how we think and get control of our thoughts, that they should be positive thoughts and constructive thoughts. And um, it's very important to just take a bit of time out every day for yourself and realize that you are enough and you're more than enough um, and that uh, you're greatly supported and greatly loved. And that everybody should stop and do that for like he five, 10 minutes. I actually he meditate. Meditates every day. I meditate every day. I feel like it saved my life. And um, 
uh, you know, I stopped smoking cigarettes through meditation and uh, I took control wow. of my meditation. Yeah. And I took control of my life through meditation. And I think that, um, that if a person just takes five minutes to stop thinking about everything, just shut it down, just think about it, a dot, a black dot for five minutes, and amazing things creep in when you shut it down. You know what I'm saying? Make it quiet for a second. Listen to your own mind. And, and go with yourself and believe in yourself. Everybody is uh, like a piece of God. So everybody has like a which means that you have a piece of God that is unfiltered, like part of the creator, which means that we are creators and we use, and where the, the soul is in the brain. And when we use our brain, we create reality. And all of our reality is derived from our thoughts and if a person is in jail, it's because they did things, they made thoughts, they had thoughts that made them have bad decisions that ended them up in that situation. So realize that we are in every situation because of how we use our box and take control of your box and um, think positively, think happy and, um, and uh, believe in yourself and go for whatever it is that you need to go for. Don't be afraid because your mind will create the the reality and I totally believe in that and I feel like seeing that uh, throughout my own life and throughout the lives of anybody who is, has any type of desire to do anything or goal you see how your willpower can will things into reality so just stay positive and and that was the longest 30 seconds yeah, <laughs> I was like seven <laughs> hours later I gave you 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> <laughs> seven hours later 30 seconds up yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. good phone. to go I'm like talking to a dead phone and your phone died like five minutes ago. It's like, hot damn. Yeah, I'm, I'm, wa I'm watching the battery like slowly and on <laughs> me. Remember I'm slowly shutting there like we're on our, on our Zoom by ourselves now. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna end off with this. I wanna tell you, like you said, there's so many, you have an achrais. If God gave you a gift, who are you to deny the world of the gift that he gave you? And like, we're not saying you have to become big and famous like Chaya and Rip Schneier. You don't have to go on YouTube and Instagram. You could go to a hospital and sing to somebody, yeah. sing to your, your but, but use it. Don't just like keep it to yourself. That's the most selfish Everyone thing. Has yeah. Everyone has something. Exactly. Everyone has something. And so, yeah. Definitely. So I, I, I want to tell you though, you have a gift and you're using it to the most, the greatest way possible. You're inspiring Chaya young girls Rip Schneer, you're getting people out of their the depths of sorrow and, and pain and, and darkness, and yeah. you're lifting them up with every word, with every vocal cord. You're connecting to Neshama, like Neshama, like nobody else. And when I posted you today, you know, some people who, who I didn't even know where they were living because they didn't like hear of you ever. They're like, where was I living? This These vocals are amazing. I posted both of your 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 songs and they're like, thank you. Never heard Jewish, you know, artists that sound like this. So thank you. Hashem should give me the clock to continue giving to the world. Thank you and thank everybody thank you so much, who joined us. Yeah. You know, you, we really appreciate Zoom and everybody. Thank we wouldn't you. be here if not make people listening to our music. Yeah. So I mean, you know, we'd be singing in the shower, you know. <laughs> exactly. Chai and I are doing a little something something uh in two, in two weeks, something. right? For us to get details today, right? Everyone. I I should really check my chat, Chaya. <laughs> <laughs> but the bomb is supposed to be dropped today, Wednesday. Remember? Thank God I do my shimish moves. Chaya keeps me posted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you, thank you. And thank continue, you so much. continue to be the reason that so many people smile because that's exactly what you're doing. Thank and you. And you too. It's been we'll an honor. It really has been an honor. Thank you so much. And you got us together. We haven't seen each other for a couple of weeks, you know, so thank you. I, I always say this. I'm like, shimmy schmooze is bringing families together since 1964. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I love you We're guys. We're going to have some more coffee. Uh, one cup of coffee and <laughs> a little you. bit of coffee <laughs> and some water. <laughs> oh, yeah. L'chaim, guys. Hold up your cup. We're gonna we're gonna screenshot this. Somebody screenshot this. Lachai, one, two, three. Chaim. Laila Tov. Bye guys. Bye.